Welcome viewers, in this video we will see the two reaction theory of salient pole machine alternator. Subscribe the channel for more videos and notifications. Soft copy of this material available in the drive. The link is given in the description box. Now we will go to the topic. Two reaction theory of salient pole machine alternator. In a smooth cylindrical pole, that is non-salient pole. Salient pole, non-salient means not projected, is smooth smooth cylindrical the length of air gap of machine is constant because of smooth cylindrical air gap is constant so the reluctance of the air gap is constant so the mm of of our armature and the field act throughout the entire air gap and so on so non polyan mean there is no projection smooth cylinder air gap is uniform reluctance is uniform mm of and of field and armature or act entire throughout the entire air gap and so on in case of salient pole next one in case of salient pole but in case of salient pole that is projected pole machine the length of air gap is not uniform so the reluctance of air gap is also not constant so the distribution of armature and field mmf in the air gap is not constant so they cannot be added vertically vector vectorially so in case of salient pole the air gap is not uniform reluctance is reluctance of the air gap is not uniform so the distribution of mmf in armature and field also not uniform so that cannot be added vectorially vectorly we cannot add so for that we are using this two reaction theory so this is the the diagram of the alternator so the outer is the stator the inner is the armature so this having the two axis this horizontal axis is called quadrature axis q axis this vertical one is called direct axis and d axis so we are going to deal with this this is the two reaction d axis and q axis direct axis and quadrature axis so to find this result and mmf this bolognelles theory is used we are using this theory to find the result and mmf according to this theory the armature current is divided into two components this component of armature current along with the axis id component of armature current along the quadrature axis iq so we have direct axis id quadrature axis iq like that it is divided armature current is divided into two components id with direct axis iq with quadrature axis and the armature mmf is also divided into two components component of armature mmf along with the direct axis is called fd component of armature mmf along quadrature axis is fq so this armature mmf also divided into two component fd along with direct axis fq along with quadrature axis the axis along the field pole is called the direct axis d axis or pole axis the axis between the interpole regions at 90 degree to d axis is called a quadrature axis or q axis just now we saw the diagram so the axis along with field pole normal vertical y axis like y axis is direct axis or d axis or pole axis perpendicular to this direct axis is 90 degree is called a quadrature axis or q axis the q axis is is the axis of low reluctance d axis is the axis of low reluctance the q axis is the axis of high reluctance right so that reluctance is our main concept we are because of non uniform reluctance only we are going for two reaction theory so that we got ro, low reluctance in d axis high reluctance in q axis the field mm of f f act along act only along the direct axis 
FF produces a voltage of E0 or E phase. So the phase voltage is produced by FF that is acting along only direct axis. Right. So but the machine, but the armature MMF act along D axis and Q axis. So the field MMF only along the D axis, direct axis. But the armature MMF act along both D axis and Q axis. So FD is the MMF, MMF along direct axis. FQ is the MMF along quadrature axis. ID armature current along direct axis. IQ armature current along quadrature axis. These four already we discussed. But in field current, field MMF only along the direct axis. Now we will see the phasor diagram of salient port machine. Phasor diagram is available. So this is the D axis. We have F, F and F, pi F. That is nothing but field MMF. F of is the field MMF and pi F is the flux produced due to the field MMF. Now this is the quadrature axis, Q axis, E phase. This is the resultant E phase. So the pi Q and pi D. The resultant is pi AR. This is pi Q is along with quadrature axis. Pi D is along with direct axis. Vector sum of these two is pi AR. Similarly, FQ is the MM of along quadrature axis. FD, MM of along direct axis. Sum of these two is FAR. Similarly, current IQ and ID. Vector sum is IA. So, the resultant E phase is produced. This is a phasor diagram. Right, armature current, then field current, then flux. Armature MMF, this is armature MMF and armature flux. Now we will see the further detail. The field MMF, F, F, act along D axis and produces pi F. Flux pi F produces an EMF E phase. E phase lacks pi F by an angle 90 degree. So that is the discuss in the diagram. Current IA lacks E phase by an angle pi. So that also available in the diagram. So IA has two components. ID along with D axis. IQ along with Q axis. The angle between V phase and IA is pi. Angle between E phase and IA is theta. Angle between E phase and V phase is delta. So this is the, these angles are available. So ID produced MM of FD and IQ produces MM of FQ. Right? FD is produced by ID. FQ is produced by IQ. FD produces the flux pi d, fq gives the flux pi q. So that is for direct axis and quadrature axis. Now we will see the resultant. Resultant armature flux pi a r is not in phase with the i a because along d axis reluctance is less. So fd is more and in q axis the reluctance is high. So fq is less. So that is we already discussed. There is a low reluctance and high reluctance. This low reluctance available in D axis. High reluctance available in Q axis. Right. So that resultant armature flux pi A R is not in phase with the IA. Because in D axis reluctance is less. So FT is more. In Q axis reluctance is high. So FT is less. So that it is not in the phase. So in this video we discuss the two reaction theory of a salient pole alternator because of variation in the reluctance of the salient pole machine. So that we discuss two axes, direct axis and quadrature axis. In direct axis, we assume that direct axis low reluctance. In Q axis have high reluctance. Accordingly, we discuss. Finally, we got the conclusion. Subscribe the channel for more videos and notification. Soft copy of this material available in the drive. The link is given in the description box. Thank you for listening. All the best for your examination.